Welcome to St. Matthew's on this, the day of Pentecost. Please stand with me as we sing. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. <clears throat> Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Glory to God, Almighty God. To you, you all, all hearts, hearts are, are open, open all, all desires, desires known, known, and, and from, from you, you no secrets, secrets are hidden. hidden. Cleanse, Cleanse the, the thoughts, thoughts of our, our hearts, hearts by, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify, magnify your holy name. name. Through, Through Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and, and peace, peace to, his to his people on earth. earth. Lord, Lord God, God, Heavenly King, King Almighty God, God and Father, Father we, we worship, worship you. you. We, we give, give you thanks. thanks. We, we praise, praise you for your glory. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, only Son of the Father, Father Lord, Lord God, Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take away the, the sin of the world. Of the world. Have mercy, Have upon mercy us. on us. You, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Of the Father. Receive, Receive our, our prayer. prayer. For you, you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. 
you alone are the most high, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, keep us in the unity of your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God speaks, we listen. Please be seated. Our first reader is Bruce. The Corinthians, beginning at the first verse. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth, including all the saints through Ikea, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. If we are being afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. If we are being consoled, it is for your consolation which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we are also suffering. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our consolation. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, of the affliction we experienced in Asia, for we were so utterly unbearably crushed that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death so that we would rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He who rescued us from so deadly a peril will continue to rescue us. On him we have set our hope that he will rescue us again. As you also join in helping us by your prayers, so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the blessing granted to us through the prayers of many. Let anyone of the ears to hear, listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm today is taken from Psalm 63, and we will read it responsibly. Oh God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I think of you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help and in the shadow of your wings, I sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. For this next hymn, I was wondering if you could help uh, with this repeated refrain that we have here. And it's in some parts. Uh, so if you are somebody who knows your singing part, then you can jump onto your part. If you don't, uh, well, there's two options, sopranos and tenors. 
and all those in basses. If you want all the glory and power, pick the soprano and the tenor. If you think you're a good musician, go to bass or alto. Altos and basses are the best musicians, but sopranos and tenors get all the glory. So <laughs> depending on your personality. We'll start with the lowest parts, the basses, and then we'll gradually add parts, basses, tenors, altos, sopranos, and we'll just repeat the, the, uh, the chorus. And Bruce will sing the tenor and Barbara will sing the soprano if you want to lead with them. gospel today comes from Acts, and we have a special recording for you today. I think it has needs a little bit of an introduction, so it is in different languages to celebrate and honor the way the Spirit came down that first day, the way the disciples that were gathered spoke in all the languages present to share the good news. taken from the Acts of the Apostles, 
the second chapter beginning at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Ils virent alors apparaître des langues pareilles à des flammes de feu. Elles se séparèrent et elles se posèrent une à une sur chacun d'eux. Ils furent toutes remplies de Saint-Esprit et elles se mirent à parler en d'autres langues selon ce que l'Esprit leur donnait d'exprimer. Nisan, Danen, Irusalim, Katikondes, Iudie, Andres, Eleves apo, pandos efnos, tonipon ton uranu, enomenis, lentis fonis taftis, sintle to plithos, que sin sinethiti, oti icon is de castos, ti idia dialectol, la lunten afton. Antata andaru vibrantin on the padi. ఇదిగో మాట్లాడుచున్న వీరందరూ కలీలియుడి కారా మనలో ప్రతివాడు తాను పుట్టిన దేశ భాషతో వేరు మాట్లాడుట మనము వినుచున్నామే ఇదేమి Alguns de nós somos de Roma, outros vieram de Crete e outros da Arábia. Alguns são judeus e outros são convertidos ao jude judaísmo. Nós estamos ouvindo falar sobre a grandeza de Deus em nossa própria língua. Vocês já estão nos escutando e ouvindo, vou lhe ver de uma outra região, só de vocês conhecem. Mas a Bíblia é a coisa que todos os homens estão ouvindo e estão ouvindo. Kaya't tumayo si Pedro, kasama na labing isang apostol at nagsalita ng malakas. Mga taga Hudea at kayong lahat na nakatira sa Jerusalem, pakinggan ninyong mabuti ang sasabihin ko. Hindi lasing ang mga taong ito at gaya ng palagay ninyo, alas 9 pa lamang ng umbaga ngayon, ang nakikita ninyo ay katuparan ng ipinahayag ni Propeta Joel. U posljednje vreme, kaže Bog, izliču na sve ljude svoga duha, pa će vaši sinovi i čerke prorokovati, mladi ljudi imati viđenje, a starci sanjati snove. Također ću u one dane izliti svoga duha na moje sluge i sluškinje, te će prorokovati. Va čen čaj va zirat, mau dva va koj den, va čaj se tuj sam laj. Mặt trăng hoa như máu Chúc ngày viên hương lên lao là Chúa được lên Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Shall be saved Anyone with ears to hear Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church Amen. Please stand. We've just heard a very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, but first, we will say... Thought we were going to do the creed, I'll be honest. So I'm going to preach instead. You can sit down. Thanks. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to hear from your word in all of these languages that reflect your image, your beauty. Lord, I ask that you would speak through me, that I would decrease and you would increase, and that your Holy Spirit would move in this place. In Jesus' name I pray. 
Amen. Sorry for making you stand randomly. <laughs> well, happy Pentecost, everyone. It's a pleasure being with you this morning on a day where we remember the Holy Spirit coming down from heaven in tongues of fire. How would you define the Holy Spirit? Take a moment right now, just yourself, to think about how you would answer that question. Does anyone have any definitions they would like to share? Christ within us. Christ amongst us. Maybe some of the things that came to mind included the Holy Spirit is the power of God, the person or thing that somehow has been sent to us to be with us, guide us, connect us to the Father through the Son. The Spirit is part of that divine mystery that has practical implications to our day-to-day -day lives. Often the Holy Spirit is so hard to explain and harder still to see, hear, or feel that it can become a bit of a Christian euphemism. We say by the power of the Holy Spirit when we pray, but in practice, sometimes we just meant, you know, by our own willpower, self-discipline and hard work. Many a sermon from a pulpit can convey lofty, noble goals, say, love your neighbor, love those who are different from you, provide for the needs of the least of these, which sounds amazing. And we know what we have to do. We make plans, we get to work, but then we can forget to include the person of God in them. We can forget the spirit. But when we walk out those doors, we face reality and loving people different than us and our neighbors is risky. It requires being social and potentially not well received. It can mean awkwardness, misunderstanding or conflict. And that's just our neighbors. We're also called to love our enemies, especially when emotions are high, when people are scared or we're exhausted, we can be quick to anger. And the things we hear from God that he wants us to do can feel impossible. The needs we know exceed what any individual or even a single community can provide for. The demands are endless. And we know of faithful Christian leaders and maybe volunteers like ourselves that have burnt out trying to do too much because we've been spurred on by a sense that if it's good, we must do it. But Christianity, if it isn't carried out in the spirit, by the spirit, through the spirit, Christianity without a living relationship with Jesus Christ is dead. It makes church a community center or a club. We have a term for this kind of human effort in God's name, but without God's power. It's called works righteousness trying to earn God's favor by our own achievements, which on its surface look great because you're working hard, you're building a tower to heaven, and you're making a name for yourself. But we know that that's not how you get to God. God is actually already here on the ground with us right where we are. After all, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And that salvation that he made happen, that eternal life that we believe we can experience now in part before we get to heaven, 
It's not a depersonalized, warm feeling in our chests that motivates us to do good things because the Easter story is quite moving. Salvation opened the door to relationship with God. And that is a daily, an hourly, sometimes minute by minute reality. If we can slow down to be present with him. To experience his unconditional love before we've done anything. And hear from him what we are to do next. Being a Christian is not about the works you do for God, because you can fill your life with good works and not know God, not be known by God. Being a Christian is about Christ and not looking back at a historical figure that's a role model, but speaking to him right now, becoming aware that he's listening and has something to say. Is God mysterious? Yes. But that does not mean that he is unknowable. Jesus says, if you have seen me, you've seen the father. And while Jesus ascended into heaven 2000 ish years ago, he sent his Holy spirit around the same time so that we could continue our relationship with him so that we can know what he continues to say through the spirit. We as a church are in some ways at a new beginning. Many churches are the pandemic has left. If not most many burnt out and all of us have been changed. We are in need of resurrection life. I joined this parish during the pandemic when we didn't have services in person. But I have noticed that since our doors have opened up again, there are not a lot of young people in the church right now. And we're about to go into summer break. And I name that because I think the pandemic was exceptionally hard on children and youth who had to do school from home and their parents more than any other demographic. And one of the outcomes of over two years of pandemic is disconnection and isolation, especially from the church community. When Paul speaks to the Corinthians at the very start of his letter, he names God. He identifies Jesus Christ and God the Father as the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. He says the word console like five times. Paul is talking about the gifts of the spirit. One of the greatest assets of our age. And I don't mean our age. I mean, I'm 35. And those who are older than me is our capacity to console to give comfort and help relieve sorrow during a time of grief or disappointment. When I worked in Thornhill at Holy Trinity Church, my father passed away at 83 years old after a long battle of dementia. I received kind cards of sympathy from over two dozen people in the congregation. Most folks in my generation haven't lost a parent yet. And most of them don't send greeting cards. I'm not saying greeting cards are the only way to express sympathy. But what I will say is that having people who had gone on before me and had buried their parents and understood what I was going through and had lived through so much more helped me to see that I could survive this. 
I needed their kindness and gentleness even more than I needed it from my peers because it came from a place of knowing and understanding. What wouldn't have helped me at that time was a sermon telling me what to do or how to serve others. But rather, I needed presence. I needed people who understood grief in order for me to feel less alone. That is how I healed. The pandemic for many young people is their first big tragedy, their first big grief. Now, none of us have experienced pandemic before, but many, dare I say all of us, no grief. We know disappointment and loss and loneliness. And we know that God consoles us so that we can console others. Our church services are about an hour a week. And we're awake for a lot more than that in our lifetimes. Sometimes we're not even awake during the sermon. That's never here, right? What I mean when I say that is we need our Christian community, this new family of God that Jesus has started and wants us to continue to be there for each other every day of the week, not just on Sundays. It's not the next sermon or Bible study that is going to save people. These are helpful tools. But we are the hands and feet of Jesus. We are the beating heart of Jesus to be present in the world today. When we're grieving, a visit from a priest is great, but we need more than that, right? We all know this. We need more than clergy and staff to do the work of the church. We need our sisters and brothers in Christ. Now, Volunteering is a great word, but it's got baggage. It sounds exhausting because it often is. I don't know what your life looks like. So I'm not gonna stand here and say, you should be doing something for the church. But that would be straightforward, right? Yet God does not demand you volunteer. He invites you to follow him. And he just so happens to often be in places where there are needs. As Christians, we must individually recognize that we have limits and we have gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it's not always clear to us what's in either of those categories. What are the things that God is calling us to do at this time in our lives, at this time in the world? God has called us to live a life that only we can live. And we won't know what we are to do in this one wild and precious life unless we ask him. As Christians, we've professed that Jesus is Lord. So we don't get to act as if we are the Lord of our lives and we know what is best for us. We are wise enough to know that we don't have all the information, but we know someone who does. Jesus, someone higher than us, who loves better than us, who knows us better than even we know ourselves. We can trust his judgment, his guidance because his love for us is more than even our love for ourselves. So before we go racing to volunteer or sign a check or whatever it is, our first priority now and always has to be that relationship with God. I would love to be able to tell you today, show up and be present for the teenagers in this congregation, to be present for the youth in this family of God called St. Matt's. I wanna tell you that if you don't know a family with young children, by which I mean under the age of 20, and you don't have an ongoing relationship with them, then you should make an effort to introduce yourself and befriend 
a young family, reach out. And if there aren't enough young families in this church for that, maybe you know one in your neighborhood. I want to say this, but I can't say that's what's God, that's what God is calling you to. I still think it's good advice, but I recognize it's placing a burden on you that God may not have called you to. God might agree with the proposition, but if we keep relying on what we think makes sense, we're not going to be able to continue to build our church, God's church. We can't cut out asking God what he wants, seeking him for direction. Our wisdom is human wisdom and it can sound really great, but without the spirit, we could be missing out on the very will of God. I encourage you to learn how to slow down and pause long enough to pray and become present with our God. To learn how to listen for his voice and listen to his leadership for the lordship of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I'm not going to say there's anything wrong with the fact that there are some families not a part of worship regularly after the pandemic. I'm not going to say that's wrong. What I will say is that as Christians, we must take more seriously prayer and relationship with God. If we, the generations of, if we love the generations of people who are leaving our church communities, my generation, the next generation, if we want them to see that there's something worth sticking around for, it will only come through prayer. In our passage from Acts today, Luke quotes a prophet, Joel, who says, in the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour my spirit out upon the flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. We are a congregation of people, a parish, a volunteer organization. None of us have to be here. We choose to be here. And yet I believe we are here because we are called by God to be here. We are called to worship. We are called to community and we are called to serve. The spirit doesn't discriminate. The spirit does not look at your age or mobility. God can and does use everyone. And if you're not dead yet, you're not done yet. So I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, in his mercy, Lord, pour out your spirit on St. Matthew's, on all of us. Help us use the consolation you have given us over the years to console those who are burnt out on affliction right now. He who rescued us from such deadly peril will continue to rescue us. On him we have set our hope that he will rescue us again. The spirit came down over 2,000 years ago in order to give all the disciples gathered the ability to speak other languages. It says the spirit gave them the ability I am too well aware of my lack of ability, my limitations, but if God has called us to something, he will make it possible. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the prayers of many that will build this new family of God, this church community. Let us ask God what he wants from us and then trust him to give us what we need to get there. Amen. Amen.
Now we can stand. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please take a position of prayer. Marilyn Friedman will be leading our prayers of the people today. Please join me in prayer. The response for today is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to God, our Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, making intercession for the church, the world, and for all people according to their need. Come, Holy Spirit, set our hearts on fire with love for God and for one another. Propel us into the war zones of hatred, despair, and unbelief. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine, Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Yemen, and other areas of our world affected by war. <clears throat> we pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Purify the church with your holy fire. Burn away its sins and schisms. Warm it with love for Jesus and for the world he came to save. Teach us to remember, cherish, teach, and live as Jesus instructed, especially his command to love one another as he has loved us. When our eyes do not see the gravity of racial injustice, shake us from our slumber and open our eyes, O Lord. When out of fear we are frozen into inaction, give us a spirit of bravery, O Lord. When we try our best but say the wrong things, give us a spirit of humility, O Lord. When we recognize and respond to address racism, give us a lasting spirit of solidarity, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Descend upon the hearts and minds of everyone in this congregation. Help us to shine the light of Christ on the lives of those who need him most. Conform us ever more perfectly to his blessed likeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today for the leaders and bishops of the Anglican Church, for Linda, Andrew, Sydney, and Anne, our Metropolitan, for our clergy, Philip, Merv, and Gail, for our staff, Tom, Tyler, Christine, Anita, and Lisa. We give thanks for the many volunteers who give of their time and talent to lead, guide, and develop our parish. In this week's St. Matthew cycle of prayer, we pray for Michelle, Paul, Sophia, and Joshua Lorimer, Andrew and Elizabeth Lucko, Bill, Anne, William, Galen, and Cameron McKay, and Lois McPherson. Breathe health, wholeness, and hope into the hearts of all who suffer, especially those who have asked for our prayers, for Sudharam, Enid, Mark and family, for Margaret, Carol, and John, for Merv, Barbara, and Phyllis. And we thank you, Lord, for Bob Holloway as we celebrate his 90th birthday last weekend. 
Grant refreshment to these spirits, Lord. Restore them to full fellowship with all who love them. Bless everyone who cares for them, especially those whose research and skills brings new hope to those afflicted by suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we entrust our prayers and petitions into your hands, gracious Father, for the sake of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ, 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 the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. Let us turn to the light and confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Peace to you and peace to your house and peace to all who are yours. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please turn to one another and share a token of that peace. Peace to you. Peace to peace. everyone. We give from the bounty that God has given us to sustain and extend the work and love of Jesus Christ. If you would like to give in person, there's a donation box at the doors into the sanctuary, and we continue to receive donations through PAG and other online means, which you can find on our website. But let us join together in song and worship the Lord. Every time I feel the spirit. I don't know how familiar this song is, but it's quite easy to, to catch on. So we'll sing. If you can join me on the chorus, we'll sing it twice. And then I'll sing the verses. Uh, and then we'll sing the chorus uh, three more times after that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Amen. Giver of life, receive all we offer you this day. Let the spirit you bestow on your church continue to work in the world through the hearts of all who believe. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Now, as our Savior commanded us and taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. Hi, I'm Christine. I am the Associate Pastor of Youth and Discipleship here at St. Matthew's. I started in 2020. Uh, I've been here for a while now, and Phil is on vacation. We've only had to call him twice this morning. So, you know, it's been a good morning. I'm so grateful that you're here. Thank you for joining us to celebrate Pentecost. Thank you to everyone who wore the color red today and are looking so fabulous. Uh, we have our first coffee hour in a very long time in the parlor. I hope you will join us. And if you are online, please join us for a virtual coffee hour. Grab a tea, grab a coffee, grab a snack. You have your whole kitchen at your fingertips. So probably have a bit of a better spread, but it's still going to be great. I hope you'll come with us. The parlor is just through those doors. And finally, Sign up for our emails. If you haven't already, we share a lot of great information about what's going on in the church. And always keep in mind what is going on that I might be able to invite someone to. What is happening that could be a great way for a friend or a neighbor or a family member to connect to our community. And yeah, keep praying. So I believe we have one more song. Worship. Spirit of the living God. more. 
resources. Peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Thank you. 